Good evening, friends, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you along with my dear friend Lena Asher. And what a mind oh, mind blowing moonshot conversations we had with Sally Ann on last Sunday. One of the few things we do know about the future is that we will all need creativity and innovation as a human skill. Friends, not only because technology will automate so much of what man used to do, but also to solve the problems that have been created by man. The solutions to these problems will be found only by the creativity of man. Absolutely, Agnella Rajesh. Uh, you know, man has polluted the sea from uh, time immemorial. Uh, then one man comes along and creates uh, an innovative sea bin. Uh, as man creates volumes of pl plastic that ruins our environment, one man uses his creative mind to create a vegan bottle that is biodegradable. Man destroys, um, you know, the habitat and environment of our planet. Um, you know, bees become endangered, and then one man creates a robotic bee. So, since creativity and innovation is the need of today and the future, in our moonshot conversation today. Um, let's discuss ways in which we can all be more creative and more innovative and help our children develop an innovative and creative mindset. Fantastic, Lena. So in the context we speak of creativity, it means a lot more than being able to draw and paint, correct? Absolutely. That's a funny one. You know, the only form of creativity, artistic creativity, that's just one form. And unfortunately, in education, we think that when we are teaching art and craft, we're teaching creativity. Creativity in the real essence of the word is the ability and tendency to generate or recognize ideas, alternatives or possibilities that may be useful in solving problems, communicating, entertaining. So in order to be creative, you need to be able to view things in new ways or from a different perspective. So among other things, uh, you need to be able to generate new possibilities or new alternatives. Absolutely. So tests of creativity not only measure the number of alternatives that people can generate um, mm -hmm. or the ability to see things uniquely. And, and you know, um, both these things, uh, the ability to see things uniquely and to generate alternatives, they don't occur by chance. It, they're linked to each other and, and they're linked to more fundamental qualities of thinking, such as, you know, flexibility, a tolerance of ambiguity, uncertainty and unpredictability. And, and, you know, enjoying uh, things that are unknown. Finally, in being creative, you know, creating something that did not exist before you created it, uh, what it brings into existence must have some value to be seen as creative or innovative. Lena, it is so fascinating how all our moonshot conversations link together. Uh, we had a moonshot conversations about being comfortable with uncertainty and being comfortable with uncertainty and tolerance of ambiguity are the fundamental ways of thinking in the process of a man uh, growing in creativity. Absolutely. So these are some of the things we've already discussed. We've discussed the brain is designed to be comfortable with certainty and to be non-creative. You know, uh, I was reading somewhere, someone calculated that if we had 11 pieces of clothing only, there would mm -hmm. be 39 million 916,800 different possibilities uh, of uh, combinations. So if you tried every combination, every working, waking minute, you would need 76 years to try each way of wearing those outfits. That's a lot of energy uh, needed to try all the combinations. And, and we've learned one thing that the brain wants to conserve energy. That is why the brain is comfortable, um, uh, you know, with the familiar and, and it wants to stick to familiar patterns. And this is further compounded by an education system which values compliance, conformity and coloring within the lines. Absolutely. Sticking with the familiar, uh, conforming and obeying. Uh, Lina, I can remember to be in the, you know, good student category, uh, how important it was to follow school rules. School rules, um, school codes of conduct, uh, these have been essential features of our education system. And these frame our behaviors, not only in school, but afterwards, in a manner that they produce obedience to authority. Think of all the written and unwritten rules in school, lining up, putting your hand up to ask a question or to answer a question. Um, you know, you have to do homework, having rules about what you can wear and how you can keep your hair. Um, all of this prepares our children to live a life of bureaucracy. bureaucracy. So within a framework of bureaucracy, um, um, these children are taught to follow the rules so that 
bureaucracy can live. Um, and it teaches our kids to follow, not to lead, and it teaches them to comply. So I would love to do a thought experiment uh, just now with our corroboree. And I want you to write with honesty, all our corroboree listening, I want you to write with honesty the first pop uh, thought that pops into your head. So um, along with me asking Agnella Rajesh the same question, are you ready, Agnella Rajesh? I'm always ready, Lina. Go ahead. So I'm hoping the uh, our corroboree is ready as well. It's a very challenging question, and I'm going to need your complete attention and concentration. So sure. here goes. B is for bat, C is for cat, A is for what? Apple. So this is the basic problem and the reason why we don't have more contrarians, people who look at things differently in our society. You know, education has taught us that there's only one correct answer for every question. 90%, in 98% of society, when asked A is for what, will say apple, because this is what we were taught since we've been in kindergarten. We teach children from a very young age to comply, to obey, to follow rules, and this leads to conformity, not creativity. You know, even when we're working in areas of artistic creativity, um, I, you know, I, when I walk through art classes, you'll find children drawing landscapes that all look the same. There'll be a house, a square with a rectangle, a yellow sun, uh, and some children may use better techniques, but you'll see similar patterns and trends of all children thinking inside the box, even when it comes to art and craft. So, Lina, lots of our friends have joined us. Naile Shah, Sandar Vin, Amod Dharmadikari, Vinita Melwani, Shrikant Nibande, uh, Rajesh Doshi. And can you believe it? When we, uh, when you ask the question A for, not only did I say Apple, but even Rajesh Doshi said Apple and Vinita Melwani also said Apple. So, that's very interesting. And that's what we have learned in school, in our schooling days. Uh, I'm sure things will change with creativity happening. And Vinita agrees to that and says absolutely. So armed with a growth mindset that we all now have, uh, we believe and know that we can develop our creativity by developing the habits of mind that will encourage this. What are some uh, things we could do, Lena? So um, Edward de Bono suggests we practice the art of lateral thinking. So he says, you know, um, just this is just one, one idea. Whenever you see an acronym, and he gives the example of NASA, N-A-S-A, Think of alternatives, other possibilities of what it could stand for. So NASA stands for North American Space Agency. So we need to create a new acronym, right? Very clever, Agnella Rajesh. So uh, Edward de Bono says we could think of things like NASA also being not always same astronaut or new adventures, splendid achievements. Fantastic. So come on, Korobri, can you put down your new create, uh, creative acronym for NASA? Uh, if you can just join us in this conversation, you can type in the comment box below. And if you can create a new acronym for NASA, I look forward to your comments. Uh, uh, the audience are Korobri. I'm looking forward for your text so that I can share it with Lena as well. Come on, everyone. When we shake up our brain, we begin to think in possibilities and begin experiencing the world in novel and original ways. Yes. So, you know, I, and this can be done by you um, for yourself or for your children. Um, if, you know, so one of the things is the acronym idea or if your children are reading a book like Harry Potter and Harry goes to a school of witchcraft and wizardry, you know, shake it up. Ask your children to create a school concept based on their favorite person. If they are younger, what does a Superman school look like? Uh, what could the subjects be like flying? Uh, what could the focus be like dealing with kryptonite? Uh, what could the curriculum be like? Or if the kids are older, it could be like an Elon Musk school. So, Lena, if I was building, uh, if if I was building an Elon Musk school, one subject would definitely be moonshot thinking, or maybe uh, with whom we uh, with him we could call it as Mars shot thinking. So there you are, Agnella Rajesh. You're already having creative ideas. There's an interesting TED talk by Rory Sutherland that's in your journals, and mm -hmm. it in the in the example he give he demonstrates why we need more creative thinking in our education. So there's a train that goes from London to Paris. A bunch of engineers are asked a question: How do you make the journey better? They come up with a six billion dollar solution that cuts down forty minutes of travel time on a three and a half hour journey. Being a creative thinker. Rory offers us another solution. If you employed the top male and female supermodels, 
and handed out free champagne on the journey, it would be a far cheaper and more enjoyable solution, one in which the passengers would probably want to spend more time on the train, not less time on the train. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, Alina, I would definitely want the right to go on and on and on. Uh, but if we uh, remember what you just said, Lena, the engineers were asked, how can we make the journey better, not faster? Most people would think like the engineers did in a very linear way. Faster, cheaper means better. That's what we interpret in our mind uh, unconsciously or subconsciously. If our education system is about teaching efficiency and productivity, then this is the natural way for the mind to think. So in the old days of industrialization, it was OK, right, to think of education as a way to improve productivity and efficiency um, in the economic world. But we can no longer be OK with this industrialized factory model of schooling. You know, going forward, we need people who experience the world in novel and original ways and respond in novel and original ways. So instead of teaching A's for Apple, one way to ask is to ask your children to come up with as many words that start with A as possible. In the same TED talk um, that's in the journals, Rory explores the conventional use of speed cameras. You know, um, it, then it took one creative person to look at it differently, who has a creative thought and experiments with smiley or frowny faces, depending on your speed. And what is found is actually these emotional faces work better than the speed cameras and at 10% of the cost. Uh, lovely. So, Lena, there are some people who have shared uh, NASA. Amul Patil has mentioned NASA standing for New Achievements Study Academy. Uh, then there is uh, Rajesh Doshi who has said New Age Super Achievers. There is Vinita Melvani who has said North Academic uh, State Academy. Uh, fantastic. And uh, Ravi Salunke, thanks for joining us. There are so many. Uh, Lokesh Nathani, uh, thank you for joining us. So, Lena, if we could look around us and keep an open mind to the things we have gotten used to seeing and asking, could we see this differently? So he, Rory goes on to say that, you know, conventionally educated econom economists are baffled that a the better effect on changing driver uh, driver behavior than the threat of fines um, and, and loss of a driving license. So the idea is to see conventionally ways of doing things and ask why. Um, and to look at whether there's another way of doing it that would perhaps be of more value. So instead of just problem solving that we usually talk about, we need to teach our children to be problem seekers, to look for a problem and then think about how to solve it. So when you have an experience with your children, whether you go to a, you know, a, a restaurant, a supermarket, a, a hair salon, ask them to look for problems that they can see and then to come up with solutions. In fact, this is how I pioneered a new way of learning 30 years ago. So, Lena, tell us some of the problems you thought about when setting up a new system of learning all those years ago. So, in 1993, the key problem I identified is, like, why don't kids enjoy learning and uh, school in India? So, that was the biggest question, why? And then I started asking all the supporting why questions. Why do we have polyester uniforms? Why do we follow the, follow the British and ask children to wear ties and use the title sir and ma'am? You know, why do we have boring uh, school walls and whitewashed wall, walls? Why are kids scared of principles? You know, why do children not have a process, uh, a say in the process of discipline? So, all these things, why do we not connect what we're learning as a concept in, cl in the classroom to the real world? And why do we make no connections between between different disciplines of learning. Fantastic. That is awesome, Lena. And our Korobri is uh, still continuing with their participation. Girija Gopinath has mentioned NASA has new alignment, super achievement. Uh, thank you, Girija. Sandeep Pote has wished you a belated happy birthday, Lena. And thank Lokesh you, Nathani, all the way from Hyderabad, has asked a question What changes to be made in our day to day life that encourages creativity rather than killing it? Uh, so, Lokesh, lots of things. One is a lot of reading. Um, second is a lot less uh, digital uh, interaction. Um, the third thing is whenever you're looking at something, just think about whether you're doing it because you're used to doing it in a certain way. Could there be a new way of doing it? So it's basically uh, being curious about any situation that you're looking at and shaking things up and asking a lot of questions. Why? Why is it like this? What if it was like something else? So Shrikant also has an acronym for NASA, Nature Aerospace Science Academy. Thank you, Shrikant, for that. 
Rajesh Doshi uh, has suggested always start with why. We agree to you, Rajesh. That's a very interesting way. A lot of answers get answered. A lot of questions get answered when you start with the question why. So, Lena, what are some of the problem questions that you now have in 2021? So not in 2021, in fact, in 2016, which is why I sold so that, you know, we can innovate again. So some of the questions I have now is why do children spend two to three hours a day on a school bus? Why does learning not start from the place of curiosity in the child's mind? Why do we place such a huge emphasis on IQ when we know EQ is the key differentiator? Why is depression constantly on the rise in our children? Why do we still educate our children for productivity when it is no longer required? So when I ask myself these questions, I start getting new ideas and start seeing new patterns um, that did not exist earlier. So basically, you know, um, to answer uh, uh, to what Lokesh is saying, ask your brain high order questions and you will start receiving higher order answers. So rather than see this time of change and disruption as, as, as a time of fear, we should see this as an adventurous new world for our kids uh, with, with, with us not having to focus on productivity. We can do so. We can focus on creativity. And, and this brings new opportunities for fulfillment, joy, self-discovery, creative expression, uh, new ways of doing all things. And, you know, a, a connection to all of this means that we can now start measuring happiness rather than GDP. Absolutely, Lina. So we should ask our children higher order questions that arise from our experiences and the environment. Absolutely. So as a family, you can you know, ask, how can we cut down on the trash we produce? Um, how could Mahatma Gandhi you know, have used uh, social media to promote the salt march? Um, what would you change about your school? Uh, how could you use blogging and the internet to share your ideas and then pick something your child is really passionate about? You know, it could be being vegetarian or animal protection or the environment, whatever it is. So start getting your kids to start thinking in creative ways. Yes. And once upon a time, distribution of creative ideas and expressions was very limited. You had to get the interest of a record company, book publishers or investors. Today, it is so easy to distribute your work for exposure. Uh, also to get credit and as a source of revenue through social media and funding platforms. In fact, uh, people are more attracted to micro brands today than mass brands. People want things that are more personalized and unique than mass produced. So every individual has a chance today to publish ideas or their talent also. Absolutely. And, you know, in the words of David Perel, uh, the thought leader I've interviewed for Karabri, we must work with our children in a way that each one of them finds his or her personal monopoly. So some form of creativity, some form of expression, some form of craft that is uniquely their own. And, and then we teach them how to derive financial value from that. So even if children don't set out with a personal monopoly to like start an entrepreneurial venture, Every organization will be looking for creativity uh, or creative thinking in people that they hire. So, Lena, what are some things we could do to help children uh, develop creative ways of thinking and to find their personal monopoly? So we can encourage our children to explore, uh, to imagine, to break rules and to create. Uh, we can engage them in questions and games um, that center around the why that somebody said was so important. All of this develops a curious mindset, one that looks for problems. Um, curiosity actually is what leads to creativity. So engage your child in imaginative play as much as you can, and the sillier it is, the better. You know, plan a tea party, and what could be uniquely different about your tea party? Um, who could come to the tea party? Could you invent a new name for uh, you know evening tea? Um, could you make an invitation for Peppa the pig to attend your tea party? Uh, could you do it in a way that's not a paper invitation, a video invitation? What can you use instead of a table for the tea party? The aim is to start having kids think differently, to use ordinary objects and toys in unusual ways um, so that children think more openly about the world around them. So um, when you are with them, ask them open-ended questions. Um, so. Yeah, let's think of some open-ended questions you could ask your kids. Why do you think flowers are colorful? Or what do you think that the bird is doing? Yep. So today, and, and, and we need to do more of this because today I see less engagement between parents and kids. And I see kids with rooms strewn full of toys and books. And then they go from racing car to screen to robots. And this hacks creativity in two ways. Boredom is proven to spark creativity. 
Um, so we have to allow our children times to get bored. And gadgets themselves are not evil. It's just that it allows your child um, not to have extended board, periods of boredom. We always keep picking up our digital screen or device when we feel bored. In, and in research experiments, it's board groups that outperform um, you know, uh, other groups on creative tasks. Also remember when we spoke about minimal, mi minimalism, any clutter, including toy clutter, kills creativity as do close-ended toys. Uh, Lena, what is a close-ended toy? So close-ended toys are like battery-operated toys, um, things like Lego kits that have a specific, um, you know, build. For example, that's another example of a close-ended toy. So you, you know, you have the Lego kits that get built into something yeah. specific with step-by-step -step instructions, and and this toy will develop logic. It'll develop an analytical brain, uh, but and an organizing brain, but it will not develop a creative brain. So when buying Lego, don't just buy the blocks that don't lead to something specific, but ones that rely on a child's imagination to build into something. So a child can use it to build a ship, a plane, or whatever the child's uh, imagination leads to. Absolutely. So when children are young, the less organized toys they have, the better. So pots and pans become a band. A cardboard box becomes a home for your dolls. A shoe box becomes a bed. When reading stories with your kids, ask what if questions. What if, you know, Jack's beans were not magic? What if Goldilocks was Goldilocks and the three tigers? Um, you know, when you're with your kids at night, gaze up uh, at the sky and make images out of the clouds. Uh, tell stories about that giant you see in the sky. Ask your children to make up characters of a story that no one has discovered yet. So it's not Superman, it's not Spider-Man, but make your child come up with a character. What does this character look like? Where does it live? What does it do? Does it have a superpower? While doing all these activities and games, you know, be wacky and demonstrate that creativity and the process is the goal, not perfection. If A is for Apple, can you design an Apple that no one in the world has seen or imagined as yet? Uh, um, you know, uh, when my son was young and we were in Australia uh, with his, uh, uh, with his uh, cousins, we played Queen of Lena. And I, instead of saying Queen of Sheba, I'd say Queen of Lena. And then I'd say Queen of Lena once. And usually I'd say something that made them think in a different, in a, in, in a non-linear way. So Queen of Lena wants something that's connected to white, but is not white in color. Um, and then the kids would start developing this power of associative or things like that. Excellent. So Lena, there is a very interesting young dynamic entrepreneur, Chintan Vasani, who has got a very interesting... Uh, a statement which he has made, how I wish I could go back to school and Lena and Agnello uh, are my teachers. Uh, Chintan, my answer to that is even how I could wish that I could go back to school and have a Lena and another Agnello as my teacher as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And uh, Lokesh has a very interesting comment. I once attended a Lego workshop two years back and were asked to create various things and it was very interesting and created things which I never thought I could. It was fun and it was exploratory. Absolutely on track, Lokesh. That's what Lena is always talking about. And Divya Punjabi uh, has a question uh, where she's asking lots of I wonder questions help, right? Absolutely. Lots of I wonder um, uh, why, what if. All these are the types of open ended questions that help lots. Fantastic. So, Lena, I can see why we need uh, to change so much of what we do in our schools. Our schools have been great for what we have needed so far. Uh, logic, numbers, analysis, and all the what questions we have asked the kids so far. The what question. Yep, and, and you know, the how questions for the planning, the organizing, and following procedures. They were great once upon a time. Fantastic. So, uh, Lena, other than uh, not teaching children uh, that for every question, there is only one correct answer and that, a, uh, and that a, a is for Apple. What are some of the other things we could do with our children? So one of the greatest things you can do for your kids is to demonstrate the power of reading. You know, um, it, it, technology is not a culprit as, you know, the world makes it out to be. It's actually what we use technology for and the fact that, you know, the brain finds a video more engaging than print. So it'll go there. So when kids pick up a tablet, they're more likely to go to a video automatically because the brain is lazy. 
and uh, teach your kids that video does not allow you to use the power of visualization and imagination. You know, one of the things we used to do is get kids to listen to a cricket match on TV rather than watch it, because that actually um, creates the, uh, it makes you use creative visualization when you hear the cricket commentary. And when you do so, it combines both the left brain activities of language logic with the right brain domains of you know of creativity and visual imaging and there's a there's a there's a uh, activity in the journal just uh, created for for you to experiment with that with your kids so read a visual description and ask your child to imagine and paint it and then vice versa take an image of a scene and ask your child to describe it in words and if the child is younger you know just record and help script the de description for your kids and if your child is older encourage him or her to develop the writing craft um, give your child guidance to build projects and to have entrepreneurial dreams and agnella rajesh very soon we're going to have a great announcement of something we're going to launch to help kids build projects and build ent entrepreneurial ideas. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that, uh, Lena. Are there uh, any other research findings to share, Lena? So studies uh, show evidence of higher serotonin levels connecting to developing a creative mind. So look to boost your kids and your serotonin levels naturally. Um, exercise does it. Um, so does spending time in nature and in natural light. The amount of time spent in sunlight correlates positively with serotonin and dopamine synthesis in your body. Foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids boost serotonin in the brain. Meditation helps, as does feeling grateful. Um, gratitude helps re release serotonin and dopamine. Uh, so practice writing in a gratitude journal uh, and start your kids on these, this journey as well. Um, you know, all of this helps build, boost serotonin in the body and the brain. So we have explored games that lead to an increase in creativity, structured games and unstructured play and unstructured uh, open-ended toys. Anything else we uh, should be mindful of, Lena? Absolutely. So stress is a creativ creativity killer. So we will not over plan and overbook our kids. We'll give our children space and grace. Boredom is essential for creativity, as I've already said. So we'll make sure we'll stop making sure that our kids have something to do all the time. Uh, listening to music is a creativity booster. Uh, playing an instrument is an entire body and brain workout, which includes the uh, areas responsible for creativity. In the research I was doing, Agnella Rajesh, I came across a fascinating book called The Power of Your Other Hand. And hopefully we'll get the author on next Sunday. And this shows remarkable benefits of using a non-dominant hand to do things, that using a non-dominant hand to brush your teeth or, or write improves the usage of both hemispheres of the brain. So this is also strongly correlated with improved levels of creative feel. Fantastic, Lina. So that's good stuff. We can all do with more of, actually. Uh, what do you advise for us adults? So always have a notebook handy to capture new ideas, seek out new experiences, challenging tasks, read as much as you can in varied areas, not just in your area, area of spe specialization. Um, all of this you know, will create connections in your brain um, and, and the things that you synthesize because of that will amaze you. Surround yourself with interesting people and stimulating conversations. Seek out to do things that you would normally not do and, um, you know, see if you can apply say something you see like in an art museum or somewhere else to your area of work yeah just say how could this apply seek to stimulate your thinking and wherever you go or whatever experience you have look at it with the mind of a child so i wonder how could we make do what could we do to make this better um, asking lots of what if questions always questioning the status quo all of this allows you to expand your perspective and reframe what you're seeing or experiencing. You know, creativity is like a muscle. Um, um, the more you stretch it, challenge it, and occasionally push it past its comfort zone, the more it will work for you. Fantastic, Lina. Ravi Salunki has a very interesting statement which is uh, mentioned uh, where he says that allowing to wonder in nature, exposing them to be, uh, exposing them to different senses like smell and touch. Uh, this is what is commented for what children can do. Uh, we are getting lots of comments today, Lena, but there is shortage of time. We have almost run out of time. Uh, in fact, uh, Lena, after we did the moonshot conversations on uh, the reticular activation system and the subconscious mind, I have started keeping a notepad by my bedside for ideas that my 
subconscious mind may have incubated in my sleep so that I can jot them down. So Thomas Edison said, never go to sleep without a request to your subconscious. The unconscious mind is a much bigger deal than we've ever realized. Um, you know, intuition and the sudden flashes of insight that um, that sometimes spring fr from, uh, from, from our subconscious, they're still very little understood, but very, very interesting to neuroscientists and um, psychologists. You know, there's, there's, you know, the downtime that you have before you sleep, um, the time that you have when you do nothing. Um, there's a whole science of daydreaming. This is the, all the time of mental incubation, and this is all the stuff that enhances creative thinking. Mind wandering is essential to imagination and creative thought, um, and this can happen when you're driving or when you're walking. Um, uh, you know, it's it's in fact why they say that 72% of people have actually creative insights when they're in the shower. Fantastic. In fact, Lena, in reading about innovation, I was fascinated about how Velcro came about. Uh, it came about by a man looking at a very common weed, cockle burrs, in a very different way. Uh, this plant has little hooks that get stuck. These stuck themselves uh, themselves to his pants and his dog's fur. And can you imagine? It was a new innovation. He used this observation to create Velcro. And that's how Velcro has come into being. So at its core, creative is just a new and useful way of seeing things and combining, you know, old ideas, looking for connections and relationships in a fresh way. Um, you know, so it's uh, Einstein said, if you think about creativity as the ability to develop meaningful connections um, uh, between different parts of your reality, you can start to realize that creativity isn't just reserved for people like uh, Mozart and Picasso. It's something that, you know, we can all uh, 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 bring to fruition and it can impact all our lives and it's something we should all practice. Fantastic. Divya Punjabi has made a comment. Difference between creativity and innovation is creativity is the act of conceiving something new, variant of something existing or completely uh, new and innovation is putting it into practice. Right, AR? Absolutely correct, Divya. I strongly and firmly believe in what you have commented. In fact, I say whatever was supposed to be invented is already invented. Whatever can happen now is innovation. People who have created solutions to the past problems, we need to have, uh, we need to identify problems in those existing solutions and then rectify them, uh, which I would call it as innovation. What is exactly, uh, which is your comment that you have just done online. Uh, thank you for that, Divya. So, uh, Lena, like everything, creativity should be a practice, a process that is consistently worked at. Absolutely. So even what seems like a spor sporadic idea like the Velcro doesn't come out of thin air. To truly practice creativity, creativity, commit to a schedule, show up and get to work whether you want to or not in whichever area of you know creativity you work on. Um, you have to have creativity work for you um, only if you work for it. Uh, into a routine, make it a habit. Um, you know, these are the things... Um, that the more you, you you immerse yourself in it, the more neural connections you make um, that sort of uh, create the strength of creativity in your brain. There's this very fascinating, I was reading something by Elon Musk's ex-wife, and she suggested that if you're a master of one world, like say education or medicine, think of a second world that you could become master of, like say technology or marketing, and think about how they could come together. She says, and, and it, it was really interesting what she said. She said, when these two worlds can come close together, um, they can have idea sex and make idea babies. And that's actually all <laughs> creativity and, and innovation is about, right? It's just bringing two different fields, two different uh, ways of thinking together. Well, in our uh, creativity is really an excellent and a very interesting topic. But unfortunately, we have again run out of time. I'm going to experiment with uh, some of what we have discussed today, Lena. Uh, being curious, asking myself and my children higher order questions, doing more tasks with my left hand and allowing times of boredom in my day so that I can get more creative. So, Lena, looking uh, to integrate ideas from seemingly dissimilar fields and fixed periods of learning and reading. I'm looking forward to all of this. Yeah. So two last things I would like to add. One is that when practicing quantity is important, it leads to quality. So you have to practice a lot, um, whether it's writing, ideas, art, whatever you do, um, you know, for those one or two uh, to stand out, you have to 
actually create a lot of quantity. Secondly, I want you to experiment. Um, the whole corroboree experiment with something I've been doing for the last two weeks after reading that book is to use your non-dominant hand for tasks. So I brush my teeth with my left hand now. Uh, Maria uh, Kanikova, a psychologist and author of Mastermind, um, she says that you know when you force yourself to do something with the other hand, your non-dominant hand, you force your brain to develop new pathways, and that will often promote new ways of thinking and spark creativity. Fantastic. Uh, so, uh, friends, audience, corroboree, let's all experiment as far as I can remember. So many lefties are in the creative field. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Mark Twain, Mozart, Paul McTani, uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Marie Curie, Henry Ford. The list goes on and on and on. So much to discuss, but so little time. So friends, uh, see you next Sunday. And uh, Lena and our Corabri, uh, see you next Sunday with some more interesting topic and concept which can excite the Corabri. And fingers crossed, we'll have uh, Lucia C uh, Cappuccioni, the author of The Power of Using Your Other Hand, um, as our special guest next Sunday. So I think we are still playing technology and sometimes your band just uh, gets affected or impacted. But I'm sure you've got the crux of the subject that is creativity and you have enjoyed all the uh, interactions, the conversations, the comments of the audience. Thank you for joining with us every Sunday. We we'll see you all next Sunday on the 17th of Jan at 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Thank you once again. And once again for the month of Jan, I'm always going to be wishing you a very happy new year. Thank you so much. Thank you.